Hi, I'm Gary Remley with Mickey Truck Bodies. I'm here at Mickey's brand new liftgate installation facility to demonstrate our two new customer driven features on our side load bodies, the Mickey E-Door and the Mickey E-Lock. The system uses an infrared remote to open, close, stop and reverse the roll up door. The E-Door's infrared detection circuit is mounted in the rub rail of the vehicle. Upon receiving a signal from the remote, the door will either open or close. If the remote is pressed again while the door is in motion, the door will stop immediately. When the remote is pressed again, the door will start moving in the open direction. For driver safety, the system is equipped with an extraction override mechanism that will stop the door from closing and return it to its open position. With proper usage, the e-door system is maintenance free. There are no end user adjustments or lubrications required. And now let me show you our new e-lock. The keyless roll-up door locking system is controlled by a pair of switches mounted within easy reach of the driver's seat. One for the curbside doors and the other for the roadside doors, which lock and unlock separately. Indicator lights on the panel illuminate when the doors are unlocked. The Mickey E-Lock uses a fail-safe mechanism which prevents the doors from locking when the door is open, which helps eliminate damage to paint and decals. There's also a manual bypass system that can be activated in case of a power failure. With Mickey's new E-Door and E-Lock, you can now open, close, lock, and unlock your doors with just the push of a button. Now you hear from Nick Pfeiffer from our Mickey engineering team with some troubleshooting tips for the E-Door and the E-Lock. I'm Nick Pfeiffer, project engineer here at Mickey Truck Bodies. Today, I'm gonna to step you through some of the troubleshooting tips for the Mickey E-Door and E-Lock systems. The E-Door is a microcontroller-based system whose main purpose is to control the opening, closing, and stopping of a vehicle door. It also monitors the operational status and fault conditions of the system. If the door stops while going up, you'll hear a series of beeps. Some possible causes for this door to stop on the way up is if the product shifted during transit and fell against the door, or if a track post got bent and you have excess friction in between the door and the rollers. To correct this issue, you need to check and make sure there's no obstruction in the door track or against the rollers, or to make sure the product has not fallen against the door. If the door reverses while closing, you'll hear a different, faster beep sequence. To correct this, look for and remove any obstructions that may be in the door opening or the door track. You should also inspect for free movement in the sensor reel and cable and operators. If the door closes to the bottom but quickly reverses, you'll hear a very fast series of beeps. A possible cause of this is that the sensor reel is not detecting the full count of movements and the controller is not properly trained to the door. To correct this, slowly pull on the string and watch the sensor reel to see if it wobbles. Now you have to retrain the door with the learn remote. That's the remote with the blue button. If the door takes more than eight seconds to open or close, you may hear a beep. Some possible causes for this could be that the main operator spring is weak or the truck battery voltage is low. The first step to correct this situation is to check the truck battery voltage. The voltage at the controller needs to be at least 11 volts. If not, you need to charge or replace the battery. Another possible solution could be to replace the main operator. Please note that cold weather or high friction can also slow the door. If your remote opens two doors at the same time, one of two things is happening. Either the remote is incorrectly aimed at the sensor or the signal is bouncing off of multiple surfaces and contacting both sensors at the same time. To correct this, 
Adjust your aiming point to be directly in front of the sensor and approximately three feet away. Bright sunlight could temporarily desensitize the sensor. If this happens, move closer to operate the door. If the door doesn't respond when the button is pressed, there are a few things you need to check. First, check the truck battery voltage. The voltage needs to be at least 11 volts. If not, please charge or replace the battery. Another thing to check is to make sure that the IR sensor lens is clean on the truck. Also, check that the IR sensor cable is properly snapped into place at the controller. Lastly, you can check the remote batteries. The indicator light should illuminate when you push the button on the remote. If when the button is pressed, the motor starts driving on the operator, but the door won't go down, a couple of things could be happening. The return operator spring is weak or broken, the return operator cable is broken, disconnected, or jammed, or the door itself has some sort of an obstruction limiting its travel. On the driver's side of the truck, the return operator is located attached to the header above the main e-door assembly. On the passenger side of the truck, the return operator is located directly above the main e-door assembly. If when you hit the button the door doesn't close all the way, it could be because the door is traveling down slightly and yet every time you hit the button the door would have to go back up a little bit more. Things that can cause this are if there's not enough tension in the main operator or if the magnetic arm and the sensor reel are not free spooling. To fix this, you can add a couple of pre-winds to the main operator to increase the tension on that. And you can also check that the sensor and magnetic arm are moving freely. When you push the remote control, the door does not move, but a few seconds later, the controller beeps. There are a couple things that can cause this to happen. One would be if the override switch is pushed in the wrong direction, or two, if the motor leads have been disconnected. In the event of an electronic failure, you can still operate the doors manually by pushing the override button and then activating the doors as if it was a normal door. If you push the remote control and the door does not move but the controller starts to beep, you possibly have a faulty controller and it's time to replace the controller. As far as e-lock troubleshooting, it is a pretty simple process. When the buttons are hit, if nothing happens, including the lights not lighting up, check the voltage at the main power input. If there's no voltage, you need to trace that back to the battery to find out where your issue is. If you have voltage at this connection, you possibly have a faulty control box. If you hit the buttons and immediately the lights turn on and they don't flash, it likely means that you have an issue with your wire harness or a plug connection. Check to make sure that the main wire harness is plugged in all the way. If when you hit the buttons, one side is working correctly, but one side is not, there are two possible things that could be happening. If the lights are not turning on when you hit the buttons, you likely have a faulty control box. If the lights turn on immediately as before when the plug was undone, you could have a bad actuator or a bad connection at the actuator on that one side. To correct this, you can go to the locking mechanism inside the bulkhead and trace the wires up to the plug. If it is plugged in, you likely have a faulty actuator, and that can be replaced. If when you try to lock the doors, you receive a fault error, both lights will flash and the locks will return to the unlocked position. If this happens, there is something preventing the locking flap from reaching its final position. The most common things to check are that the doors are closed all the way down the entire length of that side of the body. If all of the doors are closed, you need to check to make sure that there is no obstructions in the way of any moving parts in the entire locking assembly. If there are any obstructions, please remove those obstructions and the lock should function properly. If after you've removed all the obstructions, you're still receiving the alarm and your doors are returning to the unlocked position, it may be time to recalibrate your locks. You can call our customer service department and obtain a separate e-lock calibration video. These troubleshooting tips will help keep your trucks running smoothly and safely. If you need any additional help or service, please contact our customer service team at 1-800-334-9061.